Good morning. Tim has thought of a challenge because quite a few people say, oh, it's quite a long time taking, doing the spray painting, there's a lot of faff and all the rest of it. So Tim thought, well, why don't I time myself, film it in real time, so no sped up bits, um, and see how long it takes. And then you can watch the whole process and exactly how long the mixing takes, the spraying takes, and the cleanup. So here goes. Plus you have to go and pick up the little one from nursery in 15 minutes. I'm not sure we can do a full bed house in 15 minutes, but we'll try. Um, so the paint was machine mixed just now, so we should be good there. We haven't used this paint before and it might all just be a marketing stunt, but it was uh, next to the trade Dulux and uh, we thought we'd try it. It's heritage range. There were lots of nice colours to work from and, right. <laughs> we don't even think we like this colour, but... Well, it's just a bit warmer than I thought, but we, after buying four sample bucks, you just got to give up and suck it up and take it. <laughs> right, where's the screwdriver? These were our samples, which Tim has also sanded back a little bit before we do the spray. Um, so, can you guess which one we've gone for? It. I think they've just sent us a light base. I'm sure it's the right one. Number one rule, always strain your paint before you put it, spray it. We're not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> I'm trusting the camera. I'm going straight into this small pot. Because we're using a small volume of paint, um, we've only we've got six tins, but a small volume of paint, because it's a smaller tin, it's you know, if I poured these into one big bucket, it would be quite shallow quickly. So this way I can top this into there and it should give us enough to do, we think, the first coat. Okay. Just a little heads up, we won't be um, painting like the lower halves because this is where the kitchen units are gonna go and over there is where the fridge and stuff is gonna go. So we've kind of marked it out so we're not wasting paint and money um, on walls where we're gonna but, wallpaper. But it is a pet hate. It is a pet hate of mine though where people just leave bare plaster or even bare plasterboard behind boilers and stuff. I think it, you should always try and get it. Like we've got it two coats on there. At least it's neat. You know, behind the kitchen and it's just rubbish. I don't mind the pet hate, but you know. <laughs> I'm going to increase our pressure up. I was about three last time. I'm going to be about three and a half. A couple of you mentioned that the tails, just where you get a little bit of a, an off spray, uh, is caused by too low a pressure. So that's what we're going to try now. Um, it's dried super flat anyway, so it's not. it would just showed up more on the misco. Are we good? Yeah, let's go. Now, as you can see here, we haven't quite eradicated those tails, so there's a little bit of overspray on the edge of the fan pattern. It's a little bit annoying because it's not what you want to see, but actually it seems to be even enough and it certainly dries flat. You wouldn't spot it after the second coat. Now, apart from the slight bit of tailing coming from the spray pattern, the biggest downfall here is lighting. If you can't get good enough lighting, it's quite hard to see where you've sprayed, especially when you're going light on light. Now here, it looks like I'm missing bits. It's actually, paint is get, getting everywhere. It's just simply not getting there quite as heavy. So on the second coat, you can't even spot it after that. 
um, but it's certainly harder to keep an even spray pattern. Top and bottom is where you tend to go off on a slight angle or you don't hold it perpendicular to the wall. So they're the key bits where I was slipping up a little bit. But like I said, if, as long as you hit it in a slightly different pattern the next time round, you won't have that problem. Just maybe a quarter more. What's it on now? It's on three and a half. Maybe three and three quarters. Okay. The pressure certainly helped with the tailing but not as much as I had hoped so you'll see when we come around to the second coat later on in the video I thinned the paint a little bit and that seemed to have solved it to a certain point. So that's pretty much the living room complete and we're at the three minute mark plus probably 30 seconds of moving lights around which I've cut out. So, so far it's not taken too long. Of course, the more organised you are and the simpler the room and the more space you've got and the better lighting, all of this could be way, way quicker. But needless to say, you don't want to rush it too much. Just as I get to the bottom there, it's it's harder to keep it flat and the angle to the surface. I'm angling it and pointing it down and that's not the way to do it. It doesn't really matter here because we're actually running panelling along the lower half of this wall. But in the theory, you should really want to keep it near enough 90 degrees all the way from the top to the bottom. Yeah. All right, I've lost my camera woman, but I'm going to carry on. Should be able to get these two rooms done. Uh, this one's being painted, all of the walls. Next one, the end one's being, uh, the end wall of this one is going to be wallpapered, so we'll miss that one. And then the far room is going to be a different colour, so then we're going to paint our bedroom, all of it, I think. Uh, tripods out in the mud, so excuse the funny angle. Okay, getting low on paint now. So the new paint showed up later that day 
I managed to get the roofs painted in another probably 10 minutes or so. Got everything stashed away ready for the next second coat. Between then and this point, I had to go around do a little bit of filling, a little bit of touch-ups, and also just go around with my phone so I could get a really like accurate bit of directional light to pick up on any dips. Right, slowly getting there. We're on the second coat of the colour now. Uh, we tried to do that one take wonder, but Joe disappeared to do the school run and I ran out of battery on the camera. But hopefully you got an idea of real time how long it took to spray the room rather than speeding anything up or time lapses. But what I will do is show you the full wash down at the end, which doesn't sound that exciting because it's not, but at least it will give you an idea of what is actually involved in cleaning up the sprayer. I've not actually touched it in four or five days. Both ends have been either bagged or covered or capped. Uh, so it should all just flow fine again. We haven't changed colour or anything. So I haven't done any washing out in between coats. It's not a massive colour difference, um, but enough to be able to see where I've been. Um, you can see where the units are going. I know Joe said we should just leave everything bare, but at least we've got a white mist coat down there. I don't feel quite so cowboy about it. Um, and we're not wasting paint now. So colour coat, visible section in the corner there and then all the way along above worktops and then the rest of it we've painted all apart from two bits of wallpaper that are going to go in the kids bedrooms so for now we're going to get on and paint I was having a little bit of problem with the tails so that's basically where you spray and you see this bit kind of little line that comes off the side and there's a few reasons for how why that might happen one might be the worn out nozzle someone else in the comments said you just increase the pressure what I've done is I've just tweaked the pressure up a little bit and I've also thinned down by about 5%. Normally you don't need to, but I'm just going to see if that helps because I can't imagine it is the tip, bearing in mind I've even only used it a handful of times. So hopefully this time round we shouldn't get that. Thinking about it, there's paint, undiluted paint in the hose here by about a litre. So I'm going to have to paint as it is until that comes through and hopefully it'll improve by the time we're on the open areas. So being that this is the second coat, I'm taking a little bit more time to make sure my fan patterns are nice and evenly overlapped. Plenty of paint going on the wall here. I'm making sure that I haven't missed any spots or I'm not building up too much paint in any particular area. getting way more paint on which means we're getting through more um, but equally there's no lines at all it looks really flat I think I've got everything. It's very hard to get the lighting right, especially when you've got no windows. Um, 
just you you need almost like one of those bar lights but you're constantly moving it so i guess same with any painting there so i think we use approximately 30 well 27 28 liters of paint over the whole building uh, that's probably a little bit more than rolling i'm gonna save another liter and a half when i clean the system back through into one of these tins and it is what it is we can't really do anything about that um it's just one of those things and it pays to use something that's half decent and this paint seems okay it is a matte paint it's not a breathable fully matte paint um but likewise it's not a really durable scrubbable matte so i'm hoping that it's going to give a nice flat finish but something a little bit more family proof than some of the flat mats we've used in the past of course clay paint um chalk paints, all, all those sort of really breathable, natural, flat matte emulsions are going to be better if you've got a solid wall or a really breathable wall. I can still make out a few little lines over on that wall, well probably all the walls, but where I can see the light reflecting. It's probably to do with the edges of those tails, but I'm hoping once it dries pretty flat we won't be able to spot those. I'm going to put the heater on now, and then hopefully in 20 minutes, half an hour, we'll get a better feeling for how this is going to look. So I thought I'd just go through it live. I haven't done this in a while, but at least it'll give you an idea of how long it takes because it really isn't that much faff for the benefit, at least. Um, so one trick I learned last time round, I just have two buckets of clean water, but one trick I learned last time round is split these two. I've always left them split. One option is you take both hoses off, go and wash them up separately in a bucket, put them back on, and then you, you're flushing through pure water all the way. Um, but I'm just going to do this way because it's fairly straightforward. Get the worst of it off. So we should now be able to spray. Turn the nozzle round so instead of a spray pattern it's just coming out as a jet. We can return fresh paint because between this hose and the full 10 metres of black hose there's a significant amount of paint in there and what's in here. So as soon as we see water coming through, which is clean water anyway, but as soon as it starts going thin, we'll stop and then we can get rid of it back into this bucket. Take the actual tip out as well. It's probably a bit dry because it's been. And we'll clean that up separately. Good, so we're back to water now. I'm just going to wash these bits up. So this mesh filter here, which is basically what is your primary filter, I guess. So if you have big lumps, you can see it's caught a few just lumps of paint. Wash that through. And then in a second, we're going to switch from this bucket to a bucket of pure clean water. And that should be our final rinse. So we've gained about a litre and a half back of paint, maybe a litre. So clean water now. And we're gonna flush it through to here because we don't we want to keep this as clean as possible for as long as possible. I guess the last thing we're going to have to do is this filter here that we put in this time, the HEA filter. Let's see how much that caught, I guess. Uh, release the pressure on the valve. Whoa! 
Well, we got our answer. It's caught loads of stuff. So that is why it does pay to use the filter. It's, what's it caught? It's kind of like, I don't know if that's dried paint or not. It's more like, I don't know, like a really fine grit. I don't know. Anyway, we don't want that in our paint or on our finish. Right, all that boring, tedious stuff out of the way. I'm gonna be entirely impractical and move the kitchen over. I can't see a reason not. And I need that wall because we need to bring some cladding down, which will definitely be for another install. We've got a load of, a load of timber. I've like become a timber merchant up there. Cedar, Douglas fir, larch, it's all stacked in the barn, but it's not dry yet. So I wanna bring it in here and together with the heater and just being in here for a couple of weeks, It'll dry out a little bit of, well, the majority of the shrinkage we can hopefully happen by then. We'll plane the boards or sand the boards down and then we'll install them up on the end. So that's why I need to be there. That's why the kitchen needs to be here. Looks like somebody's already, already had a sneak peek. You weren't meant to see that.